Today we're going to talk about the electrophysiology of electrical stimulation. In particular, what I want you to focus on is being able to uh, describe depolarization of uh, nerve and demonstrate understanding of the effect of neuron size on tissue excitability. And in particular, we're going to start to relate to how uh, this corresponds when we put uh, uh, electricity or you know when we use e-stim on our patients. So a few things for you to look at for study questions, uh, be able to define the resting potential, be able to define action potential, uh, what, uh, be able to define what electro, electrical parameters that you're able to vary to increase the number of action potentials that are generated, and what happens as you do things like increase the amplitude. Okay, so what's the typical order of response in innervated tissues? Okay, and just by way of review then, um, our membrane structure is a phospholipid bilayer. And uh, here on the diagram, you can see it's just uh, di diagramming that we've got an outside of the cell and an inside of the cell. And just remember that the inside of, cell, inside of the cell is uh, relatively negative uh, in relationship to the outside. And that phospholipid bilayer has a variety of different protein molecules embedded in it. And this little graphic shows some of those, shows, shows a diagram of what those protein molecules uh, might, might look like. And we have a lot of those, those proteins have different functions from being uh, receptors for neurotransmitters, uh, for uh, channels for things to be passing through, in particular our sodium potassium chlorides, and also they can, uh, they can act as uh, transport proteins. All right, so um, our resting membrane potential um, when the neuron is, neuron is at rest, the inside of the neuron is negative relative to the outside uh, due to the cellular concentrations from inside to outside. Okay, and so when it's not sending a signal, then it's said to be at rest. Okay, and so here we have a diagram that's kind of showing us uh, that if we put some electrodes down inside of a cell, that um, our little voltage meter here reads minus 70 millivolts. And so that's about what uh, uh, a mammalian cell is, about minus 70. Um, and that's just mainly for uh, uh, just recognizing that there's a, a negativity there. OK, so we have different kinds of ion concentrations from inside to outside. And so uh, the main things that we're really concerned about are the, the positive potassium ions on the inside. And the bold face and larger type kind of indicates um, in this diagram uh, the relative concentrations as well. So we've got uh, uh, sodium as a, as a positive ion inside the cell. And outside the cell, we have uh, a large amount of uh, positive uh, ion of sodium and negative of the, of the chloride. And so, um, uh, like I said, the resting membrane uh, potential is about uh, minus 70 millivolts. And at rest, there's uh, a lot more sodium ions outside and more potassium ions inside in the neuron. And recall, we've got a little thing called the sodium-potassium pump that uses a little bit of energy, and that's moving some of these uh, ions back and forth to maintain that balance at that minus 70 millivolts. And usually, we think about that moving uh, three sodium ions out for every two potassium ion that it pumps back in. Okay. Okay. So now here we have an action potential being being shown here. So question is, what starts that action potential uh, uh, to to start? You know, we're sitting, we've got a cell sitting there doing nothing, and what sort of thing starts that off? Um, well, if I walk up and uh, hit you on the back of the head, okay, you're going to generate some action potentials. Okay, so the force of my hand hitting the back of your head, thumping it, um, is going to make you uh, think, why the heck did he hit my back of my head? But more importantly, you're going to feel you know, my hand on the back of your head, and those neurons are going to depolarize. They're going to be sending signals to your brain saying that, ouch, that hurt a little bit. Um, and then other action potentials are going to be generated as you start to think of your response to that. Okay, so, so it just takes any kind of a mechanical, uh, a, a, a chemical heat stimulation, so any type of uh, receptor neuron that we have, and we put some sort of uh, impulse into that, like I said, whether it be mechanical through us doing some uh, manipulation, mobilization, heat, throw a hot pack on someone, 
or electrical stimulation. That's really what we're here talking about today. So once we hit that, um, you know, uh, point where we start to start to feel um, uh, the electrical energy, well, we've generated X potentials um, up the nerve now, and we're starting to perceive that. All right, so that X potential potential is generated due to some sort of stimulation, and what happens when we have that uh, stimulation is that we change the membrane permeability. Okay, so uh, if we if if uh, and as that permeability changes, our our threshold uh, starts to change, and so at approximately minus 55 millivolts, the sodium channels, those protein channels we talked about, pop open. You know, kind of think of them being like spring-loaded gates. And if I'm uh, uh, taking my finger and, you know, poking you in the shoulder, and if I poke enough, okay, that membrane potential is changing every time that I, every time that I start to, you know, increase my pressure. And if I push hard enough, and that is for you to be able to feel it, I've broken through that barrier of about minus 55 millivolts, and boom, those spring-loaded sodium channels uh, pop open. And when that happens, sodium ions go pouring in, and we get potassium ions headed back out again. And um, then at about minus 30 millivolts, and here on our slide, uh, so you know what's happening right down here, here's my threshold of excitation where my cursor is, get that minus 55. So those gates pop open. I've got sodium channels, um, sodium and potassium, you know, uh, uh, opposing each other and pouring in and out of that cell. And uh, and then here up at uh, 3, at about, uh, about 30 millivolts, uh, the sodium channels shut and the potassium channels slowly shut. So the, the sodium channels slam shut. Boom, they're done. But the potassium channels are slowly starting to uh, shut, you know, like a, a rusty, creaky door, okay? So that potassium is still making, uh, making its move um, uh, out of the cell. And so the, the potassium con continues to leave the cell and that allows that membrane potential then to return to resting level. And that's what you're seeing at position four there. Potassium is still kind of drifting out of the cell. And then finally those potassium channels close and uh, the sodium channels are reset as well. And so uh, any extra potassium outside the, the cell just kind of diffuses away. That sodium potassium pump is working away and just to maintain the equilibrium once again. And that uh, is ready then for another um, uh, another uh, stimulus to set it off again. Okay, so we usually call this an all or none response. So once we get to that minus 55 millivolts, it's it's going to happen. You know, just below that minus 55, we don't get an X potential. But as soon as you get to it, boom, it happens, and we get that um, uh, uh, stimulus to to happen. Okay, and that's the same from stimulus to stimulus. And so we can generate these anywhere from about 5 to 15 uh, per second. You know, the frequency of those active potentials are typically in, in that kind of range. Um, and they can uh, go much, much faster, but typically not going faster than about 60 per second. Okay, so if we're putting uh, 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 pads on someone, many times we have the ability to change that frequency of stimulation. So electrically, we're able to generate the number of action potentials that we want. And so the maximum rate is um, uh, determined by the period that follows the onset of the potential. We have a, a, you know, a, a, a brief period to where the fiber is either absolutely or relatively unexcitable. And so this kind of shows that in here in the blue, kind of showing where uh, it absolutely can't be uh, uh, the, the exponential uh, you know, can't be stopped at that point and can't be restarted. But once we get in that cross-hatched area, if we get enough stimulus, we can actually pulse another X potential kind of right on top of that one. We don't have to go all the ways over to where it dips back below the minus 70 line and then comes back for, uh, for that uh, uh, cell to be able to, uh, again, generate an X potential. Um, that relative refractory period is shown there on the slide is about uh, 10 milliseconds. And that absolute refractory period is only about one millisecond long. Um, and then we can uh, uh, have another X, X potential pot potentially. Okay, so we've, char we've uh, started this X potential and that runs up along the, the nerve. And so depending on whether that, that nerve is myelinated, un uh, myelinated or unmyelinated will depend on the, 
the speed of which we get uh, propagation. And so it's also dependent on the diameter of that, uh, of that nerve fiber. And just remember, it's just you know, kind of like a wire in that you know, a bigger wire has less resistance. And so the, the larger the wire, the, the faster the current's going to flow in it, less resistance. Same kind of thing with our nerve, nerve or neurons, is that the larger diameter uh, neurons uh, are going to have a greater speed. Okay, and then myelin acts to insulate that fiber, and we get that faster speed of conduction due to the saltatory conduction, or that jumping of node uh, to node, from the node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier. Okay, so if you recall that from any of the physiology classes.